understand this. Sometimes when you look at the person that's delivering the word, you may think he's the expert. But can I tell you, I'm not the expert, I'm the student, amen? And God has just given me mail to deliver and it's his words. And I'm just grateful about not only how I hope it hits you, but I'm even grateful sometimes how it hits me, amen? amen. But I am looking forward to what we're gonna do. We are concluding our sermon series, Fearless. Somebody say Fearless. fearless. If there's one person in here who was blessed at any point by the sermon series, Fearless, somebody clap your hands and say, I was blessed. Praise the Lord. I am excited about what the Lord is preparing us for and where he's taking us. How many know we're going somewhere? Oh, we're going somewhere. We can't stay here. We're going somewhere. And the Lord, many times, he prepares us by the word he deposited, deposits in our spirit so we will move like never before. Let's go right to the word. This is, mm, look at that. Brother Jesse, this is part seven. Good gracious. Part seven of Fearless. Amen. I thought we was going to be done in part four, but God was like, nah, bro, I got more to say. Amen. So we are part seven of fearless, and I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to speak into our hearts and our lives. Open up your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're just going to read two verses. Is that all right? Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Yes, Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. You don't say, hold up, preacher. The hint is it's towards the back of the Bible. Amen. It's towards the back. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Is, is our custom. We'd ask that you would all stand for the reading of the word of God. If you're able to stand, we ask that you would stand for the reading of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. And for your hearing, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, my goodness, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. People of God said amen. amen. Listen, I need you to look at your neighbor to the left of you and say, neighbor, amen. good morning. I'm glad you are here. I have a word for you. Let it go. Uh-oh, I need to look at the other neighbor like you got an attitude and say, neighbor, I'm talking to you. I got a word for you. Let it go. If you receive that word, clap your hands and give God praise. Let's pray right where we are. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you for the word that you have set before us. We need you, Lord. We need to hear from you. We need to touch from you. We ask right now that you would speak like never before. Fresh anointing, even to use me, fall fresh. Hide me behind your cross that your word will go forth with boldness, with clarity. It would accomplish the very thing that you have set out for it to do before the foundation of the world. We thank you, Lord, in advance for giving us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive. Lord, that you would have your way in this word like never before in Jesus' name. Thank you for where you're taking us, and we thank you in advance that every hindrance, every distraction, every work of the enemy is canceled right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to focus. Help us to see you even as you convict us and you instruct us and motivate us, encourage us, move us, transform us, shift us even now that you would have your way in this moment. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And we ask right now that you would speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And we give you all the glory and all the praise and ask it all in Jesus' name. People of God shouted, amen. 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 You may take your seats in the presence of God. 
Let it go. It is amazing that we find ourselves in week seven of our sermon series, Fearless. And I believe throughout these weeks, as the Lord has been depositing word into our spirit, and he's been calling us to launch out into the deep and come out of our comfort zones and move from what's familiar. I believe that there is at least three, four, ten people in here who have responded to the call. And you heard and you knew that where you are today is not your final destination. And God has a work for you that's deeper and greater than where you are. Am I talking to the right church? There are some people in here through these messages. And even these messages were not the first time you heard it. God has been calling you long before these messages. But I'm praying that they serve as a confirmation. But there's somebody in this room that says, I'm ready to walk through the open door. Somebody says, I'm ready to walk through the open door, but I'm still dealing with some measure of fear. Somebody can be honest when you told God yes, but you were still scared. Yes. Yeah. Can we be real? Yes, Somebody told God yes, but you still were shaking a little bit. Yes. And you've been asking God to, to give you what you need so you can walk boldly into this thing. And you've been asking God, just give me that measure of courage I see the door that's in front of me, but Lord, give me the courage to walk through it. If you are here, oh, I promise you, you're in the right place at the right time. The Lord wants to encourage you with something. If you're someone here that you sense that your next level is right in front of you, I need you to take this down. For people that see the open door, I need you to get your pen and your pad and take this because the Lord wants to tell you something. Here it is. Watch this, point number one. If you're waiting, ready to walk through the open door and you're believing God for fearlessness, watch this. God will not open the door in front of you until you close the door behind you. That's good, that's good. Let me say that again. I think y'all missed it. God will not open the door in front of you until you close the door behind you. For many people, watch this, God also told me there are some people that are fearless when it comes to walking through the open door, but they're fearful about closing the last door. Oh, wow. Are you seeing it? And I want to make sure that you understand that when you go to the next level and when you are walking into the next place of God, it's not just enough to want to walk what's in front of you, but you've got to release what's behind you. Many people, watch this, don't ever get through the open door. You know why? Because God has been trying to give them something, but he can't because they're already holding their past in their hand. Oh, who am I talking to? The Lord has been trying to deposit into your life, but he needs you to walk like this and not like this he needs you to walk with open arms and open hands instead of your hands already gripped to the thing that's already familiar am i talking to somebody and it's very very critical in this moment that you have to make sure that you have positioned yourself to be available to move into your next level Sometimes it's one thing to hear the call, but it's another thing to not be available. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody knows what it's like where you are sitting by your cell phone. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to mess up. And your phone rang. And truth be told, you heard it ring. And you knew exactly who it was. But for some strange reason, you acted like you were unavailable. You were just watching your show. I'm, I'm talking wrong, church. Anybody ever did? Nobody ever did this before. You were watching your show, and you sat there, and you watched your phone ring. And you didn't pick it up because you didn't feel like talking. I would hate for us to do that. He got his hand raised up. We're going to pray for you right now, brother. See, I would hate for us to do that to God. 
When truth be told, we're saying, Lord, pastor, pray for me. I'm trying to go to this next place. And God is like, I've been calling you, but you're unavailable. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? God will not open the door in front of you until you close the door behind you. Can I teach this? Can we walk through this real quick? I need you to get this. So one thing God says, you can't receive the new thing from God if you're holding the whole thing in your hand. But you know what God also said? I need y'all to get this. He says, listen, watch this. God cannot take you through the next open door if you're holding on to expired relationships. Oh, Lord, help us. Did y'all hear what I said? He says, I cannot take you where you need to go if you are holding on to expired relationships. Oh, pastor, I don't understand. What's an expired relationship? See, an expired relationship is that relationship that was cool at one point in time. There was a time where y'all were like-minded and y'all saw things the same way. But all of a sudden, you started walking with God and you started getting serious about your walk. And now you don't want to turn up anymore. You want to turn down and get on your face. You don't want to be riling out like you used to. Now you've got purpose and you've got direction and you've got destiny. Somebody knows what it's like to have relationships based on your past brokenness. But the thing that had y'all bound together was your broken places. But all of a sudden you got healed. And all of a sudden God was taking you somewhere else. And the thing that we made the mistake of, we tried to go into the new thing with the old relationship. Anybody know what it's like? How do you know if you're in an expired relationship? Well, I'm glad you asked. You know you're in an expired relationship where you're around people who don't know how to celebrate you. Yeah. See, some of us got those friends. We got those friends where you can't even tell your testimony and your praise report because they're going to find a way to poo-poo on it and try a way to find a negative spin on it and try a way to hate on it and not be happy for you because they're not happy with themselves. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? You know you're in an expired relationship. Am I talking right? You know you're in an expired relationship when you have to dumb down who you are to fit into a group or a circle. I'm going to preach this by myself. It's all right. Anybody knows what it's like? You can't fully be you because people can't fully handle who you are. So you try to just dumb down and you try to just be a little bit of yourself so now you can fit in with the environment so now they won't talk about you too much. Where you're going you need to have relationships that are fresh. You need to have relationships that God has sent. You need to have relationships that they will pray for you and cover you. You need to have some relationships where they'll tell you that your stuff stink and you've got to get it together. You need some relationships that's real and you don't have time to be an expired stuff where y'all used to do past stuff but old things have passed away. You need to get away from expired stuff where now people are uncomfortable with who you become because they're unhappy with who you become. You don't have time to please people. All you have time to do is please God. And I would hate for a relationship back here to mess up your relationship up here. And all too often people of God have put God on hold for the sake of somebody else on earth. All too often we told God, hold up, not yet. Let me go ahead and get with my boyfriend first. Sometimes we told God, wait a minute. I want to be here. And truth be told, you're hanging on to this thing because you're afraid of what they'll say about you if you're walking your anointing. You're afraid what they're going to say about you when you're walking your calling. But can I tell you something? You can say what you want about me, but you didn't wake me up this morning. You can tell what you want. You can hate. You can love. You can be indifferent. But at the end of the day, it's for God I live, for God I move, for God I have my being. 
Can we got somebody in this church that can be delivered from people, people's opinions, people's thoughts, people's stuff? I ain't got time to make you smile. I'm trying to make God smile. Is there somebody here that realizes that I've got to go to the next level and I've got to let the expired relationships expire? Man, it is 12, 19, 2021, and the expiration was 6, 14, 2019. Why are you still with them? And you're wondering why you're going through so much drama. And he said part of the drama because that relationship went sour. And it's making you sick because I promise you fresh milk is edifying but sour milk will mess your stomach up. And too many of us are choosing to stay in sour milk relationships, no matter how bad it smells. Sour milk relationships, no matter how hard it gets. Sour milk. God has called you to a new thing. You are too blessed to stay in where you are. And it's time to go through the open door. And there's nothing stopping you. Somebody give God praise. Watch this. I got to say this one thing, and I promise you we'll get to the word. Amen? This is for the people. This ain't for everybody. This is for people who are ready to walk through the open door. I'm talking to the right people. Okay, we got the God without open the door in front of you so you close the door behind you. Here's the next thing I got to tell you, and then we're going to get to the word. The next thing I got to tell you is, watch this. This is very important in order for you to move forward. Forgive, uh-oh, forgive the people who hurt you because God is using them to help you. Can we talk about it? People don't like that word, do they? Why you got this? You had to bring that up, Pastor. I was having a good Sunday. But now, we beefing. Forgive the people who hurt you because God is using them to help you. See, stagnancy and unforgiveness go together. Oh, y'all missed it. Stagnancy and unforgiveness go together. Watch this. You know what I mean by that? One of the greatest places of stagnancy is one thing for you not to forgive somebody else. But what does it feel like if God decided not to forgive you? Can we go to the word? If you read at the end of the Lord's Prayer, if I know the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, New King, King James, Hallowed be thy name. You know this? Thy kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses uh, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. But if you stop reading there, you'll miss a line that's very important. Because right there it says, after that, Jesus says, if you forgive their sins, their, your sins will be forgiven you. But if you don't forgive their sins, your sins will not be forgiven. I would hate for somebody's mess to get you in wrong standing with God. Am I talking to somebody? It's important to forgive the people who hurt you. All too often, we have people in our life that they have hurt us and it was real. They stabbed us in the back. They disappointed us. They walked out on us. But we have took a hold of bitterness that it ends up changing our whole perspective and we can't move past what they did. Am I talking to somebody? Can I tell you? There was no man or no woman on earth meant to have that kind of power over you. Am I helping somebody? And here's what ends up happening. Somebody messes you up but your unforgiveness ends up blocking your own blessing. Yes, somebody came against you, but you've got to be mindful that if God, watch this, if he allowed somebody to come against you, it's because he's going to use what they did against you and turn it around and make it for you. 
Somebody, anybody married in this room? Yes, sir. Ooh, okay. Am I the only one that got the testimony? If I never got my heart broke by the wrong one, I would never be positioned to find the right one. Come on, come on. If I did not go through the wrong things, I would not have learned the lesson about how to walk into the right things. Are you seeing this? Sometimes people had to do me wrong and God had to teach me how to maneuver and operate and even love people because sometimes people just operate in their brokenness. But I've got to a place a long time ago that I'm not going to let your dysfunction mess up my destiny. Are you hearing this? Don't let somebody else's dysfunction ruin your destiny. And you've got to get to the point I'm about to challenge y'all into deep waters right here. You got to get to a point that you can forgive somebody even when they don't apologize. Can, can we talk? I'm talking about this next level. Some of y'all will be open to forgive under certain conditions. I'm talking about two or three people in here. Y'all know I'm talking to you. You're like, Pastor, I ain't got no problem. I, I forgive them. I'm just waiting for them to go ahead and go, come on, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? If they apologize or not, forgive them and pray for them. Whether they wipe the slate clean or not, you wipe the slate clean. You know why? You have to move forward and you cannot afford to have the weight of unforgiveness on your shoulders where God is taking you. How can we receive the grace that God gives us but not give the grace that we just received? How can we say thank you to God for giving us 70 times, 7 times, but not forgive them one time? And we've got to get to the point where forgiveness is not how I feel you deserve it, but forgiveness is something that I'm called to. If it's my enemy, i got to pray for them. If they've done me wrong, i got to lift them to God and let God have it. God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. You know what? When you do something against the anointing of God, I'm praying for you, the mercy of God on you, because I ain't got to do nothing. Let God handle it. Somebody say amen. amen. So I'm prophesying that you're going to be free to walk through the open door. But before you do, you've got to let it go. Somebody say, let it go. Listen, there is a word in this text, and I just want to teach this, and I'm praying that it falls on good ground. There is this book called Hebrews, and the author is unknown still to this day. But it's a very powerful text and a powerful scripture. And I believe that it gives us a word on how we need to let things go. And I want you to understand and see some of these things as we move through the text because I believe the Lord is going to speak to you uh, today like never before. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, if you are at a st a start of a verse in the Bible, in the beginning of a chapter, if it says, therefore, it's very important that you understand what went on in the previous chapter so you can have the right context. Are y'all hearing me? So Hebrews 12, it says, therefore, what's the therefore? Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, what are we talking about? Well, Hebrews 12 is connected to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, watch this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is perfect for a fearless series because the opposite of fear is faith. Isn't that right? He says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. If you go down to Hebrews 11, chapter 6, I mean, verse 6, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. We must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So he's giving us the blueprint of faith. But who are these great cloud of witnesses he's talking about? So in Hebrews chapter 11, it's what you call the hall of faith. The Hall of Faith is the Hall of Fame of people in the Bible who walked by faith. If you read down Hebrews 11, it talks about Abel walking by faith and Noah walking by faith and Abraham walking by faith and Isaac and Jacob and Moses, David, 
goes all the way down to all the people in the Bible who were walking by faith. And it says, listen, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, listen to me, in other words, since we have seen other people walking in faith, it should inspire us to lay aside some stuff. Since God has blessed us with human examples of people who obeyed God and stepped out and took a leap, it should make us lay aside the weight and the sin so we can now run our race. Are you seeing this? Point number one, I need you to write this down. This is important. This is way, reasons why you need to let it go. Reasons why there, you have to let it go. Watch this. Never underestimate the urgency of your obedience. Never underestimate the urgency of your be obedience. See, it's right here in the text. Because there were some people who have gone before us that did what God told, uh, told them to do, now we have examples in front of us that will help us do what we need to do. Are you seeing it? This is very important. How many know that your obedience is more urgent than you think? Because your obedience is for God because he's calling you to it, but your obedience is also about somebody else. How many know that your choices are never just about you? If you're going through life making unwise choices and thinking that you're the only one that's being affected, you're wrong. Can I talk to somebody here? Your choices are always connected to other people. Some people you have met and some people you even haven't met yet. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it's very important that we do not underestimate the urgency of our obedience. Hallelujah. Because God may call you to do something, but how can you do it if you're not walking in it? Let me, let me, let me, let me give an example. Uh, young Chris, come here, man. Come here, man. Young, young Chris, please come up here. Come up here. You're like, man, I'm chilling with my girl. What are you talking about? Bring me up here. Post it up, trying to get this word. Man, I got to be in the camera. I would have put something on if I, you got to, you good, you good, you good. Y'all know, know young Chris? Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you that young Chris is a mighty, mighty man of God? Y'all believe that? Clap your hands if you believe he's a mighty, mighty man of God. <laughs> Guess what? I've been knowing this joker since he was about down here. Amen? Now he's trying to look me in the eye. But, bro, you ain't grown. I'm trying to tell you. Don't get it twisted. But one thing that I've realized since I've known him uh, since about 2011 or so, it's been about 10 years. Do this. Me and him have been connected. I don't even know if you realize it, but we have been connected. Whether it was the days of the landing, we were teaching, and you, you were barely getting into middle school and all like that, until you coming into the place now where you try and be grown. We've been connected. You know how we've been connected? How old are you, sir? He's 18. I used to be 18. Believe it or not, I was 18 once. I ain't had a great beard or nothing, had hair like, like his, but I was 18 once, but now I'm older and I'm wiser. And what took place is at some point God got a hold of me. And there were some things that I was doing at 18 that I was not proud of. But God forgave me and He showed me what I need to be doing. And I have not been perfect, but I've been faithful. As a result, God decided to connect us. Because in the midst of me doing what I'm called to do, he has deposited something in me for him. I wouldn't have it for him if I wasn't first obedient. I wouldn't have it for him if I never stepped out and took a leap and said, okay, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and preach. I wouldn't have it for him if I didn't make some wise choices. Now, praise the Lord, I hope, if you're looking to get married at some point, my prayer is my marriage preaches to you. 
But here's what happened. In the midst of not being perfect, but stepping out on faith, God has given me something. And you know what he's given me? He's given me a lifestyle. And if I can't talk to you every day, if I'm walking right, it should teach you how to walk right. Because can I tell you something? This generation needs something from this generation. You know what they don't need? They don't need to be told what to do, but we're not doing it. Can I talk to somebody? This is very important. So it's very urgent that I have obedience, not churchianity, but obedience. Not, ooh, I know the word. So the Bible says, yeah, this is what you got to do. I present your bodies as a living sacrifice, pleasing and holy and acceptable to God. Are you doing that? That's what you need to do. It's one thing to know the word. If I know the word, I can tell them. But if I do the word, I can show them. God is looking for a people who understand not only their responsibility to hear the word, but their responsibility to do the word. Because there's somebody else who needs to be taught. How do I do the word? That's why God raises up teachers. That's why he raises up mentors. That's why he raises up people that have gone before. And now there's some mistakes that you shouldn't have to make. Because I told you, I made that mistake. So you don't have to go down that road. I went left and I was supposed to go right. Now you can go right because I got the scars to prove it. I got the bruises to prove it. And you don't have to go down that way. Let me show you a more excellent way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And God needs to raise up some folk who know what they're doing in God. So he's giving you the deposit so you can deposit in somebody else. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, since we have seen, now Chris is surrounded by somebody, like we said, not perfect, but doing the best I can. Now he sees a model of what a man should be. There's a young man that's standing on the other side of you. You can't see him now, but he's in the spirit and he's looking up to you and he needs you to walk in obedience and he needs you to walk by faith and he needs you to do what you need to do. And you got a story, you weren't perfect, you made some mistakes, but God has brought you out. And now he's saying, now, go touch the young brother and bring him up. Go touch him and pray for him. Go encourage him in the faith because you've got the faith. Now you've got something to give to somebody else. Never underestimate the urgency of your obedience because there's somebody waiting to see the word in action. Give God praise my man Chris. Hallelujah. Never underestimate the urgency of your obedience because Abel was obedient. Now I see a model. Since Abraham was obedient, now I see a model. Hallelujah. See, Mr. Jesse was obedient. Now I see a model. Hallelujah. See, little John don't got to go far to look and see what a man of God looks like because he's got a witness right in his house. Are you seeing this? Let's not talk down to the last generation. Let's pour out. We either going to talk down or we going to pour out. Let's pour out. Because now our model of faith is connected to somebody else's breakthrough. Because when you begin to have faith for yourself, you'll begin to have faith for somebody else. And all of a sudden, people will be coming out because God used you to pray for them. Somebody say amen. Who oh, listen, we got to keep going, y'all. Never underestimate the urgency of your obedience. Hallelujah. Watch this. I like what he said. He says, listen, ever hear this? He said, since we are surrounded but such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us now lay aside every weight. Oh, I like that. Somebody say every weight. It didn't say lay aside the weight. He said lay aside every weight. Somebody say every weight. Oh, see, I'm glad that God is specific like that. Because here's what we got to understand. Sometimes there is weight in your life that you have it, but you haven't acknowledged it. Let me say that over here. 
There's weight in your life. Sometimes we have weight and we don't acknowledge it. Watch this. He said, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, which lets us know not every weight is sinful, but every weight is harmful. Let me say it again. Y'all missed this. Not every weight is sinful because it says lay aside every weight and the sin. That leads us to believe not every, not every weight is sin, but every sin causes weight. Amen? But we have to understand this. this is important. There is sometimes we have weight in our life, even though it's not necessarily sin, it's heavy enough to hinder your progress. Are y'all here? Point number two, please write this down. This is important. You can't walk in destiny while living in denial. Let me say that again. You cannot walk in destiny while living in denial. This is important. The reason why God says every weight and the sin. He says don't leave any part of the weight you're carrying ignored. Because it all has to be confessed up. Because how many know that God won't fix it if you won't face it? Oh God. Am I talking to somebody here? See, sometimes we can have weight, but we downplay our weight because we become dependent on it. Oh God. I'm, I'm just going to talk to myself. That's all right. Sometimes we'll have weight in our life and we'll say, it's no big deal. I got this. I got this under control. What? Nah, we ain't got to pray about that. There ain't even an issue. You said we nitpicky? That's not sinful. Got to have a cup, cup, cup of coffee every day. It ain't sinful. <laughs> Somebody about to throw a shoe at me. Are you seeing it? And every now and then, we have to take inventory of the things in our life that might not, not be sinful, but they're weighty. You know what? Not, I'm going to give y'all an example. Y'all looking like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Here's an example. Oh, it's going to mess somebody up. Here's an example of something that may not be sinful, but could be weighty. Two initials. TV. Is it a sin to watch TV? No. But it can be weighty if you spent 10 hours binging on Netflix and zero hours in the word of God. It could be weighty if we know all the sports stats and we know what's going on but can't hear God. It can be weighty if we know the narration of this show and that show and what happened here and there, but we don't know what happened in the word of God. And we've got to be careful that when we are walking on this journey, we've got to be mindful of the things in our life that are causing weight and hindering our progress. Because sometimes, watch this, when God calls you to a thing, the calling is time sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the thing that might make us late is the amount of weight we're carrying on our shoulders so we weren't walking as fast as we should be. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? We've got to get to the point where we cannot be playing tricks on ourselves by saying that something that is a problem is not a problem. Your destiny is depending on you coming clean. Oh, it's quiet in here. Your destiny is dependent on you coming clean. Because here's what needs to happen. God, oh, who is this for? God has been ready to heal you for the last five years. And the reason why your healing hasn't come because you haven't confessed your poor broken place yet. Sometimes there's a weight of unforgiveness. Sometimes there is a weight that makes me feel low self-esteem based on something that happened when I was seven years old. Sometimes there is a weight of molestation when now somebody's questioning their sexuality. Somebody has the weight of abuse when now they're fearful of relationships and they become a victim and not a victor. Is there somebody here that knows about weight? And here's what's important. God says, 
For we, you to go to where you need to go, you got to let it go. You got to lay aside. But, my, but God says also, I'm ready to fix it. I'm ready to deliver you. But I can't, I can't fix it until you confess it. Somebody say amen. amen. God sees it. But he's not going to do it until you release it. This is very critical. You can't walk in destiny while living in denial. See, this is why I love Freedom Movement Church. Freedom Movement Church ain't got time to be fake. Hello? If you're here for the first time, you've been coming for a couple years, five years, seven years. One thing about this is this is a hospital and there's no condition that's not written on the wall. When you come into a hospital, you know that there's a certain doctor because they might have the name of your condition on the wall and you know where to go. We don't, we're not the kind of church that we scratch off stuff that we can't deal with and we ain't comfortable with. God says, come as you are. But we've got to get to the point you can't stay as you are. You come as you are. But in the midst of being in the hospital, there is medicine for you. But you'll never show up to get the medicine if you don't admit that you're sick. Are you saying this? Hallelujah. Somebody needs to give me my attitude medicine. I need it right now, Jesus. I need, I need, I need, some, I, I need some better husband medicine. Because I've been in my, in my flesh. Whatever it is, you won't ask him if you're so busy in pride holding it down. Don't let the enemy keep you in pride. Don't let the enemy keep you in shame. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory. And as soon as we come clean, soon as we'll be clean. Are you hearing this? Very important. You can't walk in destiny while living in denial. Somebody say context. This is important. This is important. Because y'all just saying, man, Pastor, you, you beat me up with the word. Stop beating me up with the word. Put, put, put the bat down. Stop. You're doing too much. I can hear I can hear in the spirit. But if you don't have the right context, you'll miss the whole point of it. The verse doesn't stop here, Nydia. It doesn't stop where it says, lay aside the weight and the sin that it so easily ensnares us. It doesn't stop there. If you keep reading, you'll get the context of why we got to let us lay it aside. Watch what it says. Verse 1, we're still there. Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Watch this. And let us run, oh, there it is, with endurance the race that's set before us. Hallelujah. Here's what you got to understand. The reason why there is an urgency to walk in obedience and the urgency to be real about every weight in our life is because you got a race to run. See, it's not just taking something off. It's about putting something on. And many times, oh goodness, the enemy tries to make you carry stuff because all he wants to see, wants you to see is what you're letting go. But he never wants you to see what you're picking up on the other side. So now it makes us say, I got to grab hold to this. Because the enemy makes you believe if you lose this, there ain't nothing else for you. That's why folks stay in bad relationships. They say, man, he's not a good man, but at least he's a man. That was direct work of somebody. Somebody watching needs to hear that. You're holding on to something because the enemy has convinced you that that's all you got. But when you let go of something, the enemy doesn't show you the race on the other side. The enemy doesn't show you the destiny on the other side. Point number three, write this down. The blessing of the race is greater than the comfort of the weight. Let's say it one more time. The blessing of the race is greater than than the comfort of the weight. This is important because if God could just show you what your race looks like, you'd be in a gym right now. Oh, a word? That's what you call me? Okay, let me go ahead and get this. Let me go ahead and do these push-ups right quick. You see it? If you saw the destiny on the other side, you'd be like, you know what? I've got to run this race and I've got to get light. So I can be available to do what I need to do. Hallelujah. 
our sister Nydia is going to be going over to Uganda uh, in, in a couple of months. And we're going to pray. Let's give God praise for Nydia. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God told me to tell you, pack your bags, but not your baggage. Pack your bags, but not your baggage. And Lydia, you were wondering, what do I have to do over in Uganda? And God said, you've got to put on your running shoes. And you've got to lace them up. And you've got to dress lightly because you're running a race. And when she runs the race in Uganda, there's a little boy that walks to the altar and says, what must I do to be saved? When she runs her race, in Uganda, there are families that end up coming back together because they responded to the word of God. When she runs her race, there's a man that's going to be healed in the village. And he didn't know he was going to get his healing today, but here comes a missionary. Here comes a preacher showing up with the word of God. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God began to race. Here's the thing. When you're looking at race, you're looking at the energy that you've got to exert. It's not about the energy you exert, but it's your obedience when you start to run. The Holy Spirit begins to move through you, and the people you come in contact with get blessed. It's wonderful that God has given you something that when you do it, lives get turned around. When you do it, people get set free. When you do it, people start eating more healthy. When you do it, people get closer to God. And we've got to get to the point, if my sacrifice of laying aside my weight means somebody coming to the altar, it was worth it all along. If my sacrifice of training hard and getting myself in shape means some marriage is going to stay together, it was worth it all along. If my sacrifice means a young man is going to give his life to Christ, it was worth it all along. You have to understand the blessing of the race, and it's so much greater than the comfort of the weight. Somebody say amen. He says, watch this, run with endurance, which means this ain't no sprint, which means there ain't going to be a 50-yard dash, which means you're going to have to run. You may get tired. You may get weary. But I heard the Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing, because in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Oh, I'm believing that in this fearless message, God is raising up some kingdom minded saints that's not ashamed to run on the behalf of somebody else's breakthrough God is raising up some kingdom minded people that's not afraid to take some steps so that somebody else can have ordered steps are you seeing what I'm saying and once we get to the point where we realize that the preparation and the training and turning down our plate and spending time in the word when we're tired in the morning. When you realize the purpose and what it does, you'll be running to do it. Because you realize it brings you closer to God. And your heart and your relationship is stronger. But it also will bring somebody else closer to God. Yeah. Weight is comfortable. Oh, if you let it. Sometimes weight is comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody, you ever had stuff around your house? Maybe some of y'all are, are neat freaks. I'm talking to the wrong church. <laughs> pastor ain't neat. Amen. Ask Teresa. Pastor is not neat. I need to pray for me. I need to neat. Give me the neat anointing, Lord, please. I need it right about now. Anybody ever had stuff in your house that you said, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up in a minute? In a minute, turn into four days. And... I'm telling somebody business here, ain't I? And then all of a sudden the pile got bigger. And you just got used to it sitting there. It's like, man, you know what? It ain't bothering nobody. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there. We need that thing. You ever, you ever, you ever did that? Be, be honest. And over time, what needed to get done urgently was not done. And we sat comfortably. And all the while, the clothes piled up. Yeah, yeah. The trash piled up. The clutter piled up. You know every now and then you can throw some stuff away every now and then. Amen. Yeah. We got to hoard everything. Amen. Y'all pray for us. Amen. But sometimes, watch this. This is real life. But this is what God is saying to us. 
Sometimes if we don't deal with weight in a timely manner, it can become comfortable. And now the thing that should have been terminated is now tolerated. Did you hear what I said? Now the thing that needs to be terminated now is tolerated. Yeah, you know what, what I, whatever. It's, it is what it is. It's a, it's a statement of defeat if you, be, you don't be careful. You see it? So the blessing of the race is greater than the comfort of the weight. I want to talk to somebody right now. I believe you by faith. Watch this. That I'm going, that, that the Lord is going to pour into your spirit such an urgency to prepare that you would not be focused on anything else. You can tell when God is about to do something in your life. He doesn't just call you to move. He calls you to prepare. You can tell when God is about to move something awesome. Sometimes we're saying, Lord, where do I go? How do I move? God says, no, nah, just prepare. Just prepare. Just get ready. Because there's a race that you've got to run, run. And I understand that somebody's blessing is tied to how you run your race. That's why, watch this. Anybody ever in life never feel like going to church? You had a week that you said, you know what? This ain't, I don't work too hard this week. I just want to go ahead and stay home. Because this is just some, you know what I'm saying? It's foolishness. I don't, I'm just tired. I'm going to do bedside Baptist. I'm going to go ahead and watch online. The doors of the church are now open. We're going to now pray for you because y'all need Jesus. The reason why I ask this is sometimes, watch this, you've got to press your way to church because you feel like, oh, I can get the word there. Yeah, the church is not what you can get. The church is about what you can give. Because there's something that you have that you need to be in the house of the Lord because there's something for you to deposit to somebody else that walks through the door. You have a ministry, and if you don't know what it is, at least you have the ministry of presence. With the ministry of presence, that means that you can step foot and be available to pray for somebody, be available to speak life into somebody. That's why it is a blessing that we do not forsake the assembly of the saints. Are you seeing this? Because we've got to be in a point where we're available. The blessing of the race is greater than the comfort of the weight. I got one more. We're going to go home. Watch this. Point number four. Look what he said. We got a, we got a race that's set before us. We got to run with endurance. Here's the most important part. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Y'all see it? Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. See, here's the thing. You have to understand it's not just enough to walk through the open door. That's not the accomplishment. The accomplishment is completing the assignment. Did y'all hear what I said? The accomplishment is not walking through the door. The accomplishment is completing the assignment. Uh-huh. Like young people say all the time today, you got to understand your assignments. You, you feel what I'm saying? See, he says, looking unto Jesus is important because it's something that you need, not only if you're going to start, but if you're going to finish. Point number four, write this down. Authentic faith requires authentic focus. Oh. Be careful that you don't just pray for faith without praying for focus. Because faith will make you start. But focus will make you finish. <laughs> Faith will make you say yes. But focus will make you stick in it even when you don't understand why the storms are raging in your life. Faith will make you say yes to the Lord. But focus will make, will make you continue to say yes even when the enemy is bearing down against you. Faith will make you say, I do. But focus will say, I'm going to decide to love you every day like Christ loves the church. No matter what I feel, no matter what I got on my mind, I'm going to make a decision because I'm focused on pleasing God. Faith makes you shout hallelujah. But focus allows you to walk in it when you're on your job and temptations all around you. Faith allows you to come to church and sing the songs of praise. But focus allows you to keep the song in your heart when you're going through your depressed moment. Do you got faith? But I need you to have focus. Faith will keep you saying hallelujah with a smile. But focus says even when I don't have peace around me, the peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart and 
mind through Christ Jesus. Do you have faith? But do you need focus? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Somebody say, stay focused. This is the most distracted generation in human history. Amen? It's, not, it's just the time. Everything is about distraction. Now, if you're watching the news while somebody's talking, there's something called a ticker tape at the bottom of the screen that's giving you different information from what the person's actually saying. Now, when you're on your phone, you're reading something, but there's a notification that pops up on the screen. Now, when you're sleeping good, you hear your phone going off, and now you got to go ahead and pick it up because you can't wait six hours to see what the thing was about, and you got to know what's going on. And you've got to be careful that the devil is not setting a culture of lack of focus. Be careful. Because now he says, listen, not only do I have to let it go, not only do I have to lay it aside, not only do I have to run the race, but I also got to stay focused. Because Peter walked on water, didn't he? He said, his faith said, if you think, you believe, if you can make me walk on the water, tell me to come. That's what his faith said. But when he tacked down to focus, he started looking at the wind and looking at the rain and looking at the storm and looking at what people said and looking at all these different kinds of things and he ended up losing focus. My prayer for you in this time is a double portion of faith and a double portion of focus. Because when you have faith and focus put together, you are unstoppable in Jesus' name. When you have faith and focus put together, no one can come against you because you will not turn away from the word. Because God is a kind of God that when he tells you he's going to do something, it doesn't always happen the next day. Hallelujah. Joseph had a dream when he was 17 that he was going to be in the palace, but he didn't be in a palace until he was 30 years old. Sometimes what he puts in your spirit, you've got to have focus enough to see it through. Are you seeing what I'm saying? All too often, we have things that God has deposited in our spirit, but we let situations and people and things talk us out of what God has promised in our life. And we've got to get to a point where we make sure that we focus that if God told me to do it, that's what I'm going to do. I told the Lord seven years ago, no matter how good or how bad Freedom Movement Church is going, I'm not going to give up because I'm always going to go back to, but Lord, you called me to it. Lord, you said it. Lord, you said go. And if you told me to go, I can't give up. If you told me to move, I can't throw in the towel. If you told me to do it, I've got to open up my mouth. Is there somebody here? You've got to get it set in your mind that if God told you to do it, you got to see it through. If God put it on your spirit, you got to see it through. If God is telling you it's going to happen, you've got to see it through. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what they say about you. At the end of the day, God put a word in my belly and I will not turn from it. God put a word in my spirit and I'll do exactly what it said. No matter what it takes, God said a word and I'm not going to lose focus. So I clap your hands and give God praise. If you made up in your mind that no matter what, you will not lose focus. This is why we got to be careful in this time and in this season of who we surround ourselves with. Hallelujah. I got a lot of folks that I know and I can call and say, how you doing? But I got a very select few that I got in my inner circle. Hallelujah. I might have 50, 60, 100 folk that I can say, oh, hey, what's going on? I only need about two or three closest to me. Because it ain't about quantity in my inner circle, it's quality. And I understand that due to the nature, somebody can relate to this, due to the nature of your calling, it attracts warfare. Uh-huh. Oh, Amber, you just going to lead worship? Oh, okay. Is that what you're going to do? Okay. 
You're not going to expect any kind of attack or anything. The nature of what you're called to do attracts warfare. Because if you're obedient and you're effective in your calling, all of us will be ushered into the presence of God. So I have to attack the leader because it will mess up everybody else. Are y'all seeing it? Yeah. Due to the nature of what you're called to do, it attracts a certain element. Anybody who's walking in the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to have opposition. But if you can stay focused and have all the influences around you help you stay focused, then you shall live and not die. Are you seeing this? And if you are walking in your calling, you don't have to worry about what's coming against you because you have the focus in terms of what the word says. I believe in this time and season, it is time for you to let it go. You've got to let go of that past pain. You've got to let go of that rape. You've got to let go of that unforgiveness. You've got to let go of all those things that have you bound because there is a race for you to run. And there is somebody that's waiting and needs your obedience. God requires it, your obedience, but there's somebody that needs it. And the quicker you can let it go, the quicker you can pick it up. I'm not talking about letting, when you let this go, now you can pick this up. You can let go of the pain and you can let, you hold, grab a hold of the promise. Somebody said amen. amen. If you believe by faith, it's time for you to walk through your open door and you will be effective. I need everybody in this room to clap your hands and give God praise right now. Wow, God is so faithful. He's awesome. He continues to bless us and meet us in Freedom Movement Church Sunday after Sunday. Wow, I'm so blessed. We are in a new series, Fearless. And God is using us in this time and taking us higher and I don't know about you, but where God is taking me, where God is taking you, spirit of fear can't go with you. And we're excited about what God is speaking, and we're believing that God will take you higher, and that you will walk boldly by faith and not by sight in Jesus' name. We always thank you for tuning in. It's a blessing to have you all with us. If you wish to give, you can give online at cash app, dollar sign, freedom move. Or you can give by PayPal, www.tinyurl forward slash freedom move bible said the lord delights in a cheerful giver i can't wait until next week we will be right back here at 11 o'clock a.m and we ask that you would tune in uh, on facebook live uh, you can catch us on youtube and you can also catch us on the website but we'd love for you to come in person we're at 1148 jvl court marietta georgia 11 o'clock a.m it's going down and we're believing that we're all going to walk in the will of God and we're going to be fearless. This is Pastor Jeff signing off. Can't wait to see you next week. Love you so much.